I'll just quickly, briefly explain how gear pumps work. I said looking at the shaft, the pump, if that's the suction, the pump has to rotate clockwise. So if you have a look inside, as the pump rotates clockwise, as these gears are moving, they actually create a negative pressure. So it'll actually draw oil in. So it will then actually create a little cavity or a little compartment of oil. Right, which will continue to move around, move around, and eventually that compartment of oil will come here and join the compartment of oil coming from the other side. Um, but the oil can't is now continuing be di to be displaced by other compartments also coming into this area, but it can't go through there because there's, there's no clearance through there. So the only place the oil can go is actually out through this port here. So that's literally the, how a gear pump works. You know, when you first look at a gear pump, you think the oil goes through the middle of the gears, but it, it just can't. It actually has to go that way and around and out. You could actually run this pump in reverse um, and make that the suction side and that the discharge side, but you then have to change What's, do what's called a rotation change, which is these seals here. So this is, a, this is a, the pressure side of all seals. So this needs to go, this always faces the pressure side of the pump. So if you were to change the rotation, you would have to literally do that. to this bearing and seal assembly here so that all of a sudden the pump is going in the reverse direction the pressure now becomes the suction side so the pressure needs to be kept in here so it's literally all you need to do when you're actually doing a rotation change is change these bearing supports If you look very carefully in here, you can actually see you can feel a slight step. I don't know if you can see that line there. Yeah? But as you come around to here it disappears. So that's actually where in the pump housing. It's on the suction side, it's not on the pressure side, because what's happening is as this is rotating, the, as, as this is rotating this way and creating pressure on this side, it's, we're talking quite a lot of pressure, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand psi. We actually re we actually checked this log splitter and it was actually running at 3,300 psi which is pretty much at the limits of this pump. So what it does though, it creates a lot of side loads on these gears and it pushes the gears up against the housing on the suction side and that's why you can actually see some wear marks in there where the teeth have been slowly rubbing on the aluminium housing. So that's actually just a little bit worn compared to the original boring when it was manufactured. But that's not too bad. It will affect efficiency a little bit, but not enough to worry us in this case.
to make sure these little pins don't fall out when I turn it upside down. It's looking for these pins when they fall on the ground are a nightmare. Let me just get a, get a needle nose box. Did you film that? Okay, cool. Just remember, re remember these pins when you turn the pump upside down because if this falls on the ground, our ground is not so tidy or smooth and clean, you may not find these again. And these are quite important. Same again on this side. Same size, same length bolts as the other side, so no problems about mixing them up. Interesting. There's a bit of dirt in there. I wonder how that got in there. So this end cap doesn't have any pins because it, it's not necessary. This, those pins are actually for this end cap that actually has the hole, which basically means that the pins actually line up and keep everything in line for the shaft to actually come through. So it's amazing when you think about it. This tiny skinny rubber or neoprene or nitrile rubber o-ring is capable of stopping 3000 psi of oil. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. This is the shaft side, so this side needs to be really well aligned so that the shaft comes through here. So those little marks need to have dowels put into them. Alright, so push those little dowels. This is the pressure side. Do you agree? Yes. Yes? Yeah. So the seals are the first point of contact on the pressure side. Okay, just lift this up. Yep, I didn't want to happen, happen. Maybe we'll do it this way. Okay. 
Okay. Is that the pressure side? No, the pressure side. Would, Where's the pressure side? The pressure side would have to be that. Okay, so side. that's rotating this way. Yeah, pressure right. that that way, isn't it? You sure. Gears rotate this way, right? When they rotate this way, it's sucking into here, transferring it this way, oh, and then yeah, pushing okay. out this side. So this is the pressure side. So are those Correct? seals that are facing it, the, the seals, are they to stop any oil from That's going through stop. the carbon done much of Think about before, it. So. Think about it. So these seals keep the pressure on the pressure side. Okay? Where else is the oil trying to go? It's not going through the sides, through the middle, or just say if the seals were to break. If the seals were to break, you get a lot more leakage. How do you find that out? Don't you the case drain? There is no case drain. It'll just leak back into the oh, true. suction side. All right. So any leakage coming out through the through the gears here, there's a little bit of leakage, so it actually lubricates the bearings, right? Oh, okay. And anything that leaks out, see these cavities here? Yeah, that's what right? I was wondering before. So anything that leaks out, right, goes back in and gets sucked in, all right? Yeah. And what have we got here? We've got two tiny little feed pressure feed ports, which feed pressure to the seals to keep the seals pressurized, yeah? Yeah. Notice how there's no pins on this side because this side's not really important. Okay, we've got, we've got an O-ring. All right, we've got a bunch of bolts. Some of these bolts, see if you can find an alley key to fit.